Summary of the Diving Bell and the Butterfly by Jean-Dominique Bobby On December 8, 1995, Jean-Dominique Bobby, the editor-in-chief of the French fashion magazine Elle, had a massive stroke that cut his brain stem off from his spinal cord. This left the worldly, charismatic, and stylish man almost totally paralyzed. When Bobby woke up from a sleep in January 1996, he found that the only way he could talk to the outside world was by blinking his left eyelid. This was the only part of his body he could still move. With the help of Sandrine, his speech therapist at the Berksermeer Hospital in the north of France, and Claude, an interpreter, Bobby wrote a letter-by-letter -letter account of his time in the hospital, his memories of life before the stroke, and his deepest, most vulnerable hopes of going back to a normal life. Bobby spends the summer of 1996 blinking out the sentences of his book. As he does this, he thinks about his locked-in syndrome, which makes him feel like he is in a heavy diving bell, and he writes about his boring, tiring, but sometimes enlightening life in the hospital. He talks about the tourist patients whose doctors say they will be able to leave the hospital in a few months. He has visits from his ex-wife Sylvie and their children Celeste and Theophile, whom he worries his isolation and paralysis scares. He also sees old friends and co-workers and sends a monthly letter to his rivals at L to stop rumors that the once powerful editor has become a vegetable. He thinks about being a movie director at the Cinecita Studios in Rome and a part of the royal circle of Napoleon III's wife, Empress Eugenie. He goes through physical therapy and speech therapy. He has terrible nightmares and worries that his loved ones are leaving him. He tells funny and ironic stories from his past, talks about how he wants to write a play about his life as a paraplegic, and imagines going on trips with his old L co-workers to exotic places for conferences and fashion shows. Bobby's jumbled stories, told in short chapters that mirror the brief, carousel-like nature of his overactive thoughts, his only refuge, unfold quickly and come to a stop after he describes in detail the day of his stroke in the book's second-to-last pages. Bobby comes to the conclusion that he wrote his book to look for a key that will let him get out of the diving bell. He admits, though, that he feels he must keep looking throughout the cosmos for the magical object, spell, or miracle that will get him out of the diving bell. About the author in 1995, Jean-Dominique Bobby was the editor-in-chief of French L. He was a charismatic, well-traveled, and rich man. In December of that year, though, as he drove through Paris on a normal Friday night to pick up his son for a fun weekend together, he had a huge stroke. Bobby's brainstem was cut off from his spinal cord by the stroke. This left him completely paralyzed, but he was still aware and had all of his memories and mental abilities. During his time with locked-in syndrome, Bobby was only able to talk to people by blinking his left eyelid. After a few months of physical therapy and speech therapy, Bobby could turn his head and make simple sounds, but his life was split in two. While people in the fashion industry spread rumors that Bobby had turned into a vegetable, Bobby started to figure out his new world in a hospital north of Paris near the sea. With the help of a speech therapist and an interpreter, as well as the support of his ex-lover Sylvie, his partner Florence, and his two young children, Bobby found the courage to tell his story by carefully blinking out a memoir of extraordinary beauty. Even though Bobby died suddenly of pneumonia just days after The Diving Bell and the Butterfly was published in 1997, the book has become a worldwide bestseller and was turned into a big movie starring French actors Matthew Amalric and Emmanuel Sainer in 2007. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.